shopping costs you an arm and a leg. Greetings, you absolute rotters. You are listening to Blamit, the podcast that takes a deep dive into the best worst horror films of the 80s and 90s. I'm Stevie, your VHS veteran. This week's episode is sponsored by Joel Jones, John Cairns, Susie Smithson and Benjamin Jones. They sponsor the episode over on patreon.com forward slash Stevie's Brain Rot, so smash that into your address bar if you fancy joining the club. You'll also get access to monthly Patreon-only bonus episodes. This week, I sit down with Mike Munzer from the Evolution of Horror podcast to talk about Psycho Goreman, a movie that's a a sploshy love letter to sci-fi horror B-movie trash, and it is a heck of a lot of fun, so head to Patreon to check it out. This week, we're covering the brilliant trash to piece that is Chopping Mall, aka Killbots from 1986, written and directed by Jim Wynorski. At the time of recording this, it's currently streaming on Amazon Prime, so if you want to check it out, go and get on it. My guest this week is a playwright, songwriter, singer, actress, producer, director, bloody hell, she's probably even a knight of the round table. Please welcome my friend, Tori Allen Martin. Hello. Hello. You all right? Tori Allen Martin. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> hey talk when it's say good to see you i, well, I should probably explain that to real emerton because i don't I, one thing uh i don't think goes down well on podcasts is in jokes <laughs> so um i used to um always use my phone i used to use voice command to call people so i'd say uh phone or whatever it was called tori allen martin and it would go calling to real <laughs> <laughs> And that just became my name. Yeah. I don't really like you saying my name any other way. It feels wrong. <laughs> How are you? I mean, I'm all right, babe. How is anyone? Yeah. Is, is the question. But, um, you know, day at a time. Sometimes not even a day at a time. Sometimes an hour at a time. Just mm. do whatever feels good in that hour. And then when it stops feeling good, change it up, you know? I hear that. What about you? Um, I'm, I can't, I've got no words anymore. It's just That's been going where on I'm so at. long. Yeah, I've kind of run out of things to say or feel. And I've had this weird kind of, like, everything's hit me now. And I seem to be having some sort of meltdown now. But I'm like, I've been doing this for a year. I should be like a dab hand, you know? If you've been in a job for a year, you're like, I got this. I'm like, I don't got this. I don't got any part of this. And I'm really falling apart. And I'm just on the emotional edge all the time. I cry about anything. Like, good things, bad things. That I'm just off. But I'm just trying to ride it. It's because it's not sustainable. Because when it started, you know, you build up this, right, I've got this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do yeah. that. Because you're you're assuming it's not going to go on for, you know, a year. And then you just run out of steam so quickly. And then you're just sort of crawling along the floor going, help me. It's Hoping fucked. Hoping it's going to end. It's so fucked. But at least, you know, well, I don't really agree with we're all in the same boat. But we're all in the same storm. Mm-hmm. Very yes. different boats. But... um. At least we all know that we're all going slightly nuts. Yeah, that do, I do. I do feel a bit better knowing that I'm not the only person who hates everything. It helps, <laughs> um, and uh, and that's you know that's why it's good to, to take an hour to talk about a trashy '80s movie. Exactly. It just exactly. takes you out of all that for a little bit. It does. Um, so first of all, before we talk about the actual film, what's your relationship with horror? I love horror, which sounds like quite a strange thing to say, doesn't it? Not to me. <laughs> no, not to you. you. This is a safe space to say that. But um, yeah, I'm like you. I've always loved that we had that in common, I think. I, I love a horror movie. I love the feelings it evokes. It's weird because I don't like being scared in real <laughs> life. I, yeah. I don't get a kick out of that. That's not that's not my, you know, thing. <laughs> yeah. But I love feeling scared in a horror movie and I love... I love everything about them. I've always loved a horror and I've been unlucky and had boyfriends that are like scared of horrors and stuff. And I'm like, what is this? There's no joy. But I get a lot of joy from horror. (laughs) 
No, I know, you, I know you do because we've actually we've watched quite a lot of horror together over the years. Yeah. I remember one time actually we went. I think we did three back to back at the cinema. It was like Prometheus. Then we came out, went straight back in and saw Chernobyl Diaries, and then something else I can't remember. But I think my favourite story was when I showed you the Human Centipede. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> the Human Centipede. I was thinking of the word centimeter i think centipede babes though, human it? centipede part two it was and um was I... and three you showed me both oh maybe yeah that, because you wouldn't let me watch any of them without you that's where we got to and you i knew that our friendship would be over should <laughs> i do that so i you showed me two and three and neither experience have i forgotten no and i remember looking over this was my favorite <laughs> moment what during the second one there's this awful scene where it a woman sort of gives birth in the front seat and the baby's head goes under the accelerator. Anyway, it's rough. But um, I looked over with like a grin on my face to see how you were finding it. And you weren't, you weren't scared. You weren't disgusted. Mm -hmm. Uh, The only emotion I could describe your face as having (laughs) was concerned. Concerned. I've never forgotten that. And you (laughs) took a picture and it's just like, (laughs) concern. Toriel and Martin, concern. Yeah. And it was... I I had I had a lot of questions and a lot of emotions and I think it was easier to bottle them up sure into concern because that was the overriding ha- nobody was going to get out of that Stevie and I was concerned I oh, it's fantastic I, I wonder if I, I can find the picture and post it to go with the episode because it, be nice. it's fucking brilliant <laughs> um so moving on to we're yeah. going to be talking about one of my favorite trashy 80s horrors actually i've seen this so many times it's chopping mall from 1986 and it's directed by jim wynorski um now just a quick thing about him so he directed a few horror films back in the day around this time um and then he went on to direct slightly more salacious films such as the bear wench project oh yeah uh with trilogy actually which is a play on the Blair a trilogy Witch project, so you obviously. so you don't even need one you need three of them three bear you? wench projects um and the the synopsis of that is four sorority girls with large breasts hike <laughs> hike into the wood with their guide to find out the true story behind the bear wench so yeah so uh and then he also did the witches of breastwick so he likes to take films it's funny because um i have quite a few breast notes in my synopsis (laughs) so i i had picked up on that theme well he's he's definitely uh yeah jim wynorski he's definitely jim wynorski right he loves the boob doesn't he yeah wow so what are your overall general thoughts as a whole about (laughs) chopping more where do you start with that Right. That sounds like an easy question. Um, <laughs> well, don't have a lock in in a in a shopping mall. No, hell don't not. do that. Don't trust a robot. <laughs> you know, God. I really we're even further ahead with technology now. You know, I was born in eighty six, and I know how much technology has changed. But I think I'm fine with normal security guards. I'm fine with people. Would, yeah. that would be my takeaway yeah it's an it's an it's an extreme choice um extreme and i've got a lot to say about the uh, the robots actually i mean i love the film i think it's actually it's got a bit of everything it was um it's got that sci-fi it's got a bit of horror it was originally uh it was released under the title kill bots kill bots yeah i quite like that why the change well it wasn't doing very well at the box office and at that kill point bots. <laughs> You, do you want guys to see kill bots? Right. There you go. <laughs> yeah, chopping mall, bit more intrigue. Yeah, exactly. And in the eighties, at this point, the slashers were big business. You know, you had Friday the Thirteenth franchise, Halloween. Number right. Actually, they were the biggest things out there. So they re-released it with a more slasher title, Chopping Mall, and then it did considerably better. Interesting. But you—that's a perfect example. You just saying, do you want to go see kill bots? <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, yeah, I wouldn't see that because also I would think that's like a bunch of robots going round, like all sort of manny, angry men killing everyone. Yeah. That's not a bit of me. Whereas, yeah, chopping mall implies some young women running around topless getting chopped up and that's exactly. really upsetting but you know that that is a horror slasher movie isn't it yeah so yeah, i mean i'll go it's it's right up that street and what i love most about it i think is it's unapologetically nonsensical they don't feel they need to explain why what or how they just no. pander to the audiences at the time that wanted sex blood and anti-authoritarian teens very that's quite that is quite hard to say you did well there anti i'm proud of you 
authorita- authoritarian. Do you need to lie down? Yeah, just give me a sec. All right, I'm back. Um, all right, so let's go through Chopping Mall. First of all, I'm going to read the IMDb synopsis and then I'm okay. going to ask for your synopsis. So yeah. this is the IMDb one. I'm really interested in this. Oh, yeah, it's, it's pretty concise. A group of young Shopping Mall employees stay behind late one night to party in the stores. When the mall goes on lockdown before they can get out, the robot security system malfunctions and goes on a killing spree. Oh, was that it? Oh, that's your lot. I mean, to be fair, that's good. I did four pages, but... um, <laughs> Give me it. I want it. <laughs> Mine, do you know, because also, you know, I do write for a living some of the yeah. time, so I have to write synopsis that are quite in-depth. So I think I just got really carried away and I was like, how am I going to sell this to uh, <laughs> to people? So I, I don't... I mean, you might have to cut it down, Stevie. No, no way. Sorry. There's a lot of information here. Are you ready? I, I'm, I'm so ready. Do it. Do you need a wee break or anything? Because you'll be here for some time. <laughs> no, let's have it. Okay, good. Right. <clears throat> okay. Chopping more. I have going? never heard anything like that in my life. That was sensational. Do you know what I'm going to do? <laughs> no. What I'm going to do, listeners... I'm going to speed that up so it's super fast. And then I'm going to put the proper version at the very end of this episode so people can hear the entire For thing. For anyone who really wants it. Because if you don't want... I should do the audio description. A hundred percent. That was mind-blowing. I, I mean, I got... I felt so many emotions during it as oh, well. Good. So if you do want to hear that in all its entirety, hang around at the end because you will hear the entire thing. You're welcome. Well... Let's uh, break that down, yeah. shall we? You can't say I didn't take this task seriously. Oh my God, I'm so impressed. I really watched I, it. Literally, I mean, that'll do. All right, see you next week. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> right, so this film, as Tori said, so we open on this, uh, we see this guy and he's robbing a jewellery store in yeah. a mall after hours. And then this sort of short circuit type robot comes up and it tases him. We're tricked slightly because it turns out it's actually a presentational video being shown in a mall to introduce the mall employees to this new robot security guard. Very clever being start. Appointed. I liked that start. Yeah. Nice little bit tr- trickery. What I like also is that the, the presentational video was filmed in the same mall that they're showing it in. So it seems to me like if they already had the robots in the mall mm. and took the time to film the presentation, I feel like they could have just skipped the production day and just shown the employees then and there the robot. Just don't ask questions, Stevie. Would right, be. sure. Actually, if I'm already complaining about that, we're going to be here for a long time. Well, we're fucked, mate, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we have to these two people in the audience who are um, two employees watching the presentation. They are Mr. and Mrs. I know Bland. what you're going to say. Go on, what? Well, I mean, we've got to we've got to point out, and I I stopped it straight when I was like, I'm dead, and I got my pen, and I yep. was like, I, I swear you asked me to do this film because Paul says the one in the middle has an unpleasantly ethnic quality. Yeah, so uh, I didn't remember that he said that actually. So that's Mr. Bland. Yeah, brilliant. He says one of the three robots has an unpleasantly ethnic equality. Uh, equality? No, definitely not equality. Quality. Um, so. I th- so we assume we're being shown that they're both asshole people because they're going to get their comeuppance and get killed, right? Because you mm. think, oh, they're setting that up as terrible people. That it doesn't happen. Never seen it. But again. then I did, a, I did a bit of research, right? And however, they're actually both... It's a cameo. So Mr. and Mrs. Bland, played by Mary Warrenov and Paul Bartel, they're both characters from a cult film called Eating Raoul that Paul Bartel, the guy who played Mr. Bland, he directed in 1982. So oh. it's a reprisal of those roles. And originally, they did have another scene, right, where these two awful asshole people, they're trying to sneak a horse into the mall. <laughs> right? Do we horse. know why? Well, yeah, apparently it was... They then chop it up and serve it in their restaurant in the mall as meat and then the oh. robots get them so originally they were going to get their demise but actually they just leave it as two racist people that you never see again so, so really they should have just you know nowadays we would just cut them out of the whole story wouldn't we but maybe sure. there were issues in the edit and that would then cut out all of the information about the robots or something yeah maybe so they had to keep them but yeah i i mean i've I love that we don't know why they're there and we don't know. I mean, it's it's a skill to be racist towards a robot, especially when 
<laughs> the three robots definitely look identical. Uh, they are identical. As far as I can steel. see. But apparently there's something unpleasantly ethnic. Yeah, and uh, if it, and obviously it's a cameo from this film, but that, I mean, it's it's obscure and uh, only certain people would get that. So that's where they've kept it in. But I mean, I had to look it up. But yeah, yeah. so we, they, they, tell, they tell everyone that they have these three robot protectors that will be guarding them all overnight. And they have three ways of neutralising intruders. But then they only tell us one of them, which is sleep darts. Also... Right, how many times has this mall been burgled overnight that it needs three weaponized robots, robots. to guard it, right? And also, th- these robots are such a massive leap in technology, yet they're assigned to make sure cards galore doesn't get raided at night. Do you know what I mean? There's probably more... You could try it at the White House first, maybe. Yeah, you know? exactly. I don't know that this wall... Where, this, this wall? This mall. Where even is it? Like San Diego or somewhere? Like, where is... It's uh, LA, yeah, the Park okay. Plaza. I mean... Yeah, it's really... I had a lot of questions about the robots, really. And they were really setting us up for a felt. There were a lot of lines like, absolutely nothing can go wrong. Yeah. Cockshaw Stan <laughs> gave us that. And I was like, that's... Well, that said it all, hasn't it? As if yeah. the title didn't give it away. We all know. Famous last words. Yeah. But I, I that when they're like, the detectors do not kill. I'm thinking, I don't know. And I also, I did think old Paula Mary, whatever the names are, they needed to take it more seriously. That was That was my overarching feeling at the beginning these are robots now's not the time to laugh and joke and be racist i think you're right and it just seems very extreme measures to protect a few shops very um, extreme. but then there are so they're being stored in the security room the the, the kill bots that's what they originally called that's what i shall henceforth call them yep. um and uh we see this security guard marty and he's but he's wearing a, a like a white lab technician coat so i don't i'm not really sure of his assigned no role. But um, the storm outside, um, it trips the power boards. um, And this somehow also trips or powers up the kill bots. And I'm not sure how, because they're not plugged in. uh, But No, never fully explained. But, you know, evidently shit went down. Yeah, but I'm glad it did. Thank God for that storm, because it'd be a really boring film. Really boring Um, film. So he's reading this porn mag, and um, one of the kill bots turns on, and it smashes its arm through the uh, through the uh, porn mag and it slices his throat open mm. yeah so that's our, our first kill mm. and then uh we meet our teens which there are eight of right there's four couples basically yeah um and it does that annoying thing though when you're meeting them where sometimes they refer to them by their surname sometimes it's a nickname and so you're just like no idea who anyone is no and they all look quite similar they said lines like good times to the max and <laughs> when i set you up with a slime dog i mean what's that about um, I really liked in the restaurant when we first meet the two lady friends and the chef had the dirtiest t-shirt yeah. I've ever seen in the history of all time. It was unacceptable. And then they had this random big guy eating a lot and his mm-hmm. one line was more but waitress, more butter. And yeah. I was like, that was clearly the days when supporting artists were given lines yeah, because they didn't test him on that line. I mean, it waitress more mm-hmm. butter like i mean it was just completely wrong that was just based on his looks but i did think yeah. oh the innocent you know he really got his moment there yeah bless him and the and the uh the chef has a you know a, a very offensive over the top italian accent which is great and he's smoking over the food oh yeah of yeah. course classic really really classic. in a mall course <laughs> <laughs> Why not? They're all um, they're all talking about this party that's going to be thrown by. I think Susie's throwing the party. I'm never a hundred percent sure, but it's going to be in the mall after closing time, right? In the furniture store specifically. Specifically, yeah. the furniture store, and actually that furniture store is because they filmed this. When they filmed this, uh, they filmed it at the Sherman Oaks um, Mall in LA, and they filmed it. It had to be a night shoot, so it was overnight when the mall was closed. So the entire shooting was a night shoot and they shot it in just 22 days the entire film but not even that because when you think about that they have to wait till the shops are closed yeah and then film overnight and then they have to have everything cleared up tidy it all up span again by 8 or 9 a.m so that amount of filming time is so small and to have that small chunk of time each day for just 22 days i think they did pretty well they did do well you would never would never there's way too much faffing around nowadays they'd never get that right. done the but they, the actual the furniture store was the only empty lot in the entire um right. shopping mall so they made it look like a furniture store and they also kept all the equipment in there throughout the day when they weren't filming oh, wow. so that was their their little base uh then we meet we meet uh two more of the two more of the kids that are on their way and their car is broken down this is rick and linda now 
their <laughs> their conversation mm. is honestly one of the strangest things I've ever heard. I had to rewind it and put subtitles on, and I still have no idea what they were talking about. It's like they're speaking in code. And um, I mean, I, I recognized every single word they were saying separately on its own, but in the order in which they put those words made absolutely no sense. No. So I, uh, two of my favorites to come out of that whole saga um, was, how could I resist you with a 40 weight stain on your chest? <laughs> So, so I'm assuming it's... That is one of my favourite chat-up lines. Bench That's pressing, really. right? Yeah. I just love when someone gives me that one. Just... And then another one is, uh, remember when we said for better or worse? More like for better and weird. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favourite. And I also just love the, exp- the exposition of it all and the way I was like, okay, they're married, but they decided to tell us by saying, remember when we said for better or worse? Like... What a strange way to say that. And they also say, oh, and we blew all our wedding money on the yep. business. And you never find out what the business is. <laughs> well, I think it's the mechanic. I think they're mechanics, aren't they? Because the car's broken oh. and they open the door and it's a, it's a close up of like, I forget the motto, but it was Oh, shite. I see. I missed that. Because she does fix the car. Yeah, she's banging. He's rubbish. And he's like, first time every time. So I'm like, so why did you try pointlessly for three times and waste everybody else's time? And then also, (laughs) he's not sure about going to the party. And then she throws some satiny underwear at him. And he's like, okay, then. And I I have questions (laughs) there because I'm like, if there's satiny underwear... Why are we going to the party? I mean, we could we could get that on now. We could go home and have the sex. Why are we choosing to play with the satiny underwear in a furniture store with a bunch of other people when we're married? I mean, I, do, I don't, I don't, I don't personally get how that was what convinced him to go to the party. That's a really good point. Why does that suggest that we'll have sex, but only in front of our friends in a mall? <laughs> in a mall when we get there. Yeah. Not now I don't. I just was struggling with that. I don't. I don't she's really got a sway of him that I do, I'm obviously not that powerful as a woman right because that, but it works <laughs> it really works reason. but they definitely need us to know that they're married for what reason as well I don't fully understand because it doesn't bear any relevance on the rest of the the film nor is it brought up again I mean I'd okay you're married but I don't know why that was like a lot of backstory yeah yeah you th- you think maybe there would be a bit where they have a, a you know a tiff where they nearly break up and divorce or or a moment where a wedding ring saves the day but no yeah, there's absolutely no, no. no significance fuck all to do anything and they really hammer it home you're right yeah um, and then we we get uh, the second security guard or technician also in a white lab coat equally called... useless yeah so quite like him though he's quite sassy He's fun. He's yeah. fun. But he walks in to the room where Marty, the first guy, was killed. Mm. Now then. Okay. Uh, the body. Where's the body? That's my note. Right. So this suggests that the kill bots have purposefully hidden it, hidden. which means they're not malfunctioning and mistakenly assuming no, no. everyone's an intruder, but they are inherently evil and aware that they are doing wrong and they hide the body so that they don't get caught, yeah. which I'm fine with, but we don't go further with that theory. No. And they don't... like. Where are their arms? Like, how do their arms work in terms of like picking him up and stuff <laughs> yeah. and moving him? Where were the cleaning products? How did they find them? <laughs> how did nobody notice? I'm like, you know, how did they Google how to dispose of a body? That Google didn't exist then, actually. There were a lot of questions. And I actually, on my notes, it's in look, where is the body at the bottom quite big? Because I'm like, that is a really key question. And ultimately, <laughs> could have stopped the whole film right there because that guy could have been like, Hang on. Shit, they're malfunctioning. There's a dead body. Yeah. I mean, really quite an intense choice there. And even at this bit, so the the new technician, the one who's there, um, he's looking for Marty. And when he has his back turned, the uh, the killbots like open their dart flaps for mm. a second and then quickly close it when he nearly sees. And they're actively sneaky. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. They're fully sneaky and they're fully turned on all the time. Like I thought you had to like power them up. No, no. Right. They're there. They're always there. They are online. So I feel like this was just all... Then I'm kind of like, did we ever need the lightning? Yeah, the, uh I don't really understand. The the film Short Circuit also came out the same year, so it can't have been inspired by it. But in Short Circuit, it's basically a military um, robot that looks very similar and it gets struck by lightning and it turns good and helpful and really nice. And in this one, they're 
helpful or whatever and protectors and then they get struck by lightning and they turn bad but because they came out the same year i don't see how it could have been an influence maybe it was just a mental coincidence but um we've got the kids and they're partying in the furniture store um and they're all hooking up and they're all kissing i mean there's so much sex yeah of course i mean that's what they're there to do apparently and um susie um uh, so she's setting up ferdy and allison and there are two heroes basically and they're the only two that are not having sex which in 80s horror tradition means you survive the film because it's virgins or you know the uh, more demure people that survive and if you have sex that means you're going to die so already we know they're going to be our our main two one handy yeah one handy (laughs) one handy (laughs) uh, so then all three killbots are going online and they start patrolling the whole shopping center now you must have made a note of this the exchange we have with Susie and Greg you smell like pepperoni yes (laughs) Such a moment. <laughs> yeah, so they're making out Susie and Greg. And um, Susie, by the way, is played by Barbara Crampton. Now, but you won't know this, but Barbara Crampton is a huge scream queen. She has done so many horror films and she's still making them now. She's oh, really? an icon. Yeah, she's a huge supporter of the genre and loves horror films and produces them and stars in them still. So Fab. seeing her in this was so awesome. Uh, so, yeah, they're making out. And um, <laughs> he says to her, you smell like pepperoni. And she says, oh, if that's the way you feel. And then he says, I like like pepperoni. pepperoni. (laughs) And she says, oh, Oh, in that that case. case, (laughs) And starts humming. (laughs) She then sings, she hums while strip teasing. And my note was, it's like an old lady theme tune. It's not a sexy. It's not like, yeah. And I thought of you and your old lady humming. It's, it is, yeah. It's not like she's like, Mm-hmm. You don't have to wear your dress tonight. You know, she's. <laughs> like wartime favourites. Yeah, like she's dusting the top shelf. Yeah. Yes, that sort of thing. <laughs> what a moment. What a moment. The script oh, is, is genius. I've, I've had a great time with this script. But yeah, I wrote that exact thing down. Oh, in that case. And then they just carry on. And no one ever mentions it again. And he has sex with someone who smells like pepperoni. Because he likes it. <laughs> he does <laughs> he like he it. Likes. And then the, th- the sort of a song comes in underneath her old lady theme tune. And it and then I was like, oh, that's quite snazzy. And then it takes us to the next couple, doesn't it? Um, and this is intercut. We meet um, a night janitor who's mopping uh, a mess up off the floor called Walter, right? He's very aggressive, man. <laughs> Mm. he's not happy Mm -mm. um so but one of the kill bots approaches him now this is another moment that i was on the floor laughing so the kill bots whenever they're around they have their own music it's like and um so this bit when the kill bots approaching the music starts really quietly it's in the background so it's like and as it as it gets closer it starts going which suggests it's playing the music itself (laughs) Like it's coming out of the machine. Why, as it's approaching, does the music crescendo? (laughs) So I know they're not playing the music because it's a bit of a giveaway that they're approaching. But I just thought it's a really interesting choice. (laughs) But it asks Walter, angry Walter, for ID. um, And then it just tries to shoot him with a taser and it misses. But yeah, you brought this up in your synopsis, which you can hear the full version of at the end of the episode. (laughs) You're welcome. Um, and it misses and the taser falls into the puddle, right? But yeah. then it use, turns the taser on, which obviously mm. electrocutes the water, electrocuting him. Clever. Again, is it a premeditated act of torture? I feel like that is. But at this point, I was thinking, okay, like maybe these like are like, these terror, terror bots are going to go around and like decimate this more like murder and misery everywhere but people will genuinely be like how did it happen you know because like it was looking like that could have been a genuine accident that happened sometime you know somehow with this and especially where that guy was grumpy he was a grumpy cleaner people could have been like right he didn't get his pass out he would have got all aggy and then it's, it's malfunctioned because it misunderstood you know right so that it's like they're clearing their tracks that's what i thought but i mean that all went to shit within a couple of minutes so that I was completely wrong because old Mike they didn't hide that did they right uh, this is Mike now isn't it he goes he goes to get some cigarettes for um for Leslie for Leslie with her with her boob job <laughs> yeah with her 1980s a very 80s job <laughs> that was a new experience for me I was like okay that's what they were saying back then okay 
yeah, she got him to go and get... Oh, one of them I also noticed said, you're the king, as she came. She shouts, you're the king, you're the king, you're the furniture king. <laughs> I'm not that bit. Way to make him feel feel good about himself, you know? But yeah, yeah, Mike is next, so I'm just checking my notes, Stevie, because I took it all very, very serious. I did, I did know, although it's massively... Um, sexist and women are naked all the time. There mm. were there was a lot of badass woman shit in there as well, like you know old Allison making the good shot with the marine, and then the mechanic yeah. fixed the car first. And you know, I was like, okay, there's there's bits of badassery here that I that I'm going to hold on to that I did yeah, enjoy. Yeah, well, I think eighties horror. Th- there is a line at tread. It sort of yes, okay, it, it did exploit and degrade women in some ways, but it also usually built them up, and they often were the hero. By the mm. end of the day. So it's almost like this unwritten rule of, okay, we're going to treat you like this throughout the film, but you get to be the, the hero at the end of the day. And it's like this unspoken handshake in horror. But, you know, all the, the heroes of the 80s, and that's why we have this thing called the final girl, you know, because it's usually a girl that saves the day. And I do love that about them. And that we've kept that over the years. And in the genre, we have the final girl trope still. But we've, you know, we we have less and less of the... um the exploitative stuff with them not it's not gone completely but in ways i think it can be it's worse now because i like it's trying to pretend now that girls are just powerful and i don't know there's something more honest about this way i'm not saying we should all have to have our boobs out in a horror movie that's not that's not my point but i don't know there was something more like we know what this is. Whereas now, you know, like in the in the more recent Jurassic Park where she was just like running around everyone in high heels. I'm kind of like, yeah. that's just not realistic. Whereas in this one, they'd have had her in high heels stacking it, but then using the stiletto to stab him in the eye. I feel like yeah, it's, right. there's something more honest about it. And, um, and even the use of old homegirl with the boob job getting Mike to go and get the fags. She totally used her femininity and her sexuality and all that stuff we move away from, you know, men and women are equal. They're not though, are they? We're not. We're not equal. So now it's like women fight for equality but then don't utilise the good bits either and it's like all getting even more difficult and complicated. And there was something painfully old-fashioned about this that I was like I understand what's happening here and I understand the roles and you're supposed to think the women are weak but actually they're the fucking opposite and they're going to save the day and they do and there was something really satisfactory about it nice yeah and as you say they often use that assumption about themselves to gain something or win over exactly and I like that I really enjoyed it and Alison was the the winner you know and Mike died first because of homegirl being like get me the get me my cigs yeah, and she withholds sex death. until exactly. he does what it, it does what she wants. Yeah, I like it. You're right. That's a really good point, actually. Yeah, I think it's a, a nice balance. It's a, it's self aware in that way. Really self aware. And it I, flips it on its head. Yeah, and it felt like if we're going to enjoy the sexiness of you, we're also going to let you be badass. You know, it's kind of yeah. it felt like a deal. It felt like there was a handshake here, and everyone knew what was going on. And nowadays, I feel like sometimes the women don't know what's going on till it's too late. This felt like mm. they know. Mm. <laughs> they know. I like that. I think it. that's a really lovely view of it, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go 80s. Go 80s. <laughs> but, um, but having said that, Leslie then does die. <laughs> yeah, she does die. So, well, this is interesting, isn't it? So um, he's had his, uh, his his throat ripped out and she goes to find find him because her fags haven't turned up. <laughs> um, so the robots, which we didn't know about, have lasers, question mark? Yeah. This is new. And I mean incredible lasers. I mean, this laser gun isn't, you know, reserved for incredible tech in the army or anything. It's reserved for more security systems. And this laser shoots out and it explodes her head, right? And of course, also, these are the robots that would never kill anyone. And also, we're only going to um, detain intruders. Yeah. What the, why do they need What this are the laser? lasers for? <laughs> and I mean, in that bit, after my big, you know, speech, misogyny was definitely alive and well when they decided to, like, blow the fake titted girl's brain up in front of everybody. I was like, oh, wow, okay, you, you really went for her. She got punished for her sex appeal. Um, right, yeah. yeah, you know. But, um, yeah, the lasers were, uh, I, that was a shocker. I didn't, yeah. I didn't see that coming. And I don't, as you say, I don't fully understand the need of killer lasers if they're just to detain. Sub to you. And not kill. And weren't these ones pink? Well, they each have their own colour. That's what I thought was cute. Pink, green. But I feel like these ones were the pink ones. Again, for the girl, 
course. Of course. <laughs> she got the pink one. <laughs> right in their face. Yeah. They weren't forward thinking on gender there, were they? That... <laughs> no, of course not. No, no. <laughs> uh, so they're dead. And then uh, yep. the uh, the kids, uh, no, the, the robots, they break into the furniture store because they see the kids are in there and they start shooting at them. And the kids barricade themselves in the storeroom. Uh, and then this is another thing. The um, the robots have explosive gum to get through the, the, um, the storeroom door. It sticks gum in the corners. You know, that explosive... Yes. It just has that in its It just arsenal, has apparently. that. I did wonder where that had come from and what that was and what was happening. And that's not a tactic. I feel with the robots, they don't really repeat tactics, do they? They keep just dragging out more. Yeah. yeah. Very intelligent. It's ridiculous. I also love that they talk to each other in English in a robot voice to give each other directions sometimes. Like, it'll go, Hey, you... Number one, go that way. <laughs> it's like, one, why do they need to communicate with a human language in stilted English? Two, why are they having independent thoughts? Why aren't they surely all thinking the same, the same thing. best way? <laughs> it's you just think. fantastic. Um, so this is when the kids, uh, they all they all arm themselves with gas canisters and gasoline tanks, which there seem to be plenty of just chilling around the mall. Chilling, which I would think is a massive fire hazard. Surely. Yes. And there's also guns handy, of yeah, course. But they're like, um, tole gasolina, all, <laughs> all around the shop. They <laughs> are there. And they make Molotov cocktails. Oh, yeah. The girls. Yeah. They stick in, yeah, they stick in their, their fibre in the top. They know what they're doing. I mean, like, you've got to hand it to the teens of the 80s, evidently. Like, you know, I wouldn't have had a clue what, what I was doing with gasoline. No, and I wouldn't, well, I wouldn't know where in a furniture store the propane <laughs> and gasoline cans would be kept. Funny so, that. Funny they bet. went to the right area, yeah. Mm. And uh, this is where we do get a, a defeat of one of the bots because the boys roll a canister towards one of the robots and they shoot it and it explodes, doesn't it? They did well. Team lad smashed that. And then the bots are... Because the boys and girls have split up at this point. They've had a whole bit where they're climbing through air vents and stuff anyway, but forget that. That's um, all quite random, isn't it? And is it ever fully explained why it's like a furnace in there? I think they mention it. So they're climbing through an air vent and it gets boiling hot. And apparently, I think one of them says, oh no, the, the robots have turned the heat up. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, Stevie, that's a really important point. Like, we can't, we can't miss yet again. The robots have outsmarted, and and they now know, like they knew where the cleaning products are to hide the body. They now know where the radio, all the heat things the are. The thermostat. And one of them <laughs> has just done a little skedaddle off, while the other two are chasing and doing stuff with gum to go. Well, I know. I haven't seen that the girls have got in the vent, but they must be able to see through stuff as well because they know that. And I'm off to turn up the heat. See you in five. Me goal left. See you in five. So yeah, it's yet yeah, more, more skills. More yeah. skills. Also, there's a line that I need to. You know the mechanic, the married Please. ones? Yes. He goes, the husband goes to her at one point, I'm right behind you. And she goes, as usual. <laughs> as usual. Oh, oh. <laughs> couldn't resist Hello. a casual gag. Couldn't resist digging him out in the middle of death. <laughs> she still had to call him out and be like, yeah, you always step behind. Fucking waste, man. Oh, I took that as in that's our favourite sexual position. But no, you're you're right. I thought she was being sassy because you could also be like romantic. You know, I'm right behind you as usual. Like we're always together. I was actually like, literally like, I always fix the van. You are always behind me. Trailing behind. Yeah, here you are trailing behind again because I'm going to outsmart the robots. Nice, but th you're probably right. It's just a little throwaway stab. I like Throwaway it. stab. Just reminding us that women... Our king. Is it? Yeah. So the bots, because they've split up. Obviously, they've been in the uh, the air vent and all that. And the, the bots are after the girls. And this is where one of the robots shoots the laser and it hits Susie in the leg. The bit you missed that had to rewind. Yeah. Um. And then it shoots the gas canister in her hand. And then we cut to a massive dude in a shake and go wig scrambling around on fire, pretending <laughs> to be Susie. <laughs> you get a shot of her boyfriend like trying to work out who it is, and I was thinking he had got hope in hell of working out who that is. That's bloody Jim from production who they. Just Go in last minute. <laughs> He's like, get me the script. I don't know who dies at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it's How sad does though. he look? Yeah, that is a moment. They didn't even try and get a good wig. I swear, because they were like, oh, she's burnt anyway. Just give her a black wig. So, <laughs> right. It's, it's not the same colour or style or cut or anything. It's like a massive black, like meatloaf hairdo. Meatloaf might as well be on the floor. And the thing is, it's obviously we're ripping this movie to shreds, but this, it brings me so much happiness. All of this. It's all of these little low budget shitty bits. Oh, that, yeah. 
are just so because nostalgic. Because you're still and... fully invested. You know that that's not Susie. Yeah. But you still know it. it's still Susie, you know? It works on two levels, yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, and then they trap, they manage to trap one of the bots in an elevator by tricking it. And they, they stick one of their several gas cans on top of the elevator. And Alison shoots it, right? Mm. And it explodes. And so now it's two down, one to go. Or so we think, because fucking the first one comes back later on. Well, that's what confuses me. I was like, how many robots are there? Because they keep coming out of the fucking woodwork. So are they not dying? Or are there like 80 of them? Are they breeding? That could be another skill. Cloning. Like, Jesus. Yeah, she... Um, but she does... That. That is quite a sick moment with the lift and all that. I was like, they've really excelled themselves there. Yeah, it's, it's great. And yeah, it's also you get the, the moment. Because Alison, she's been played... Uh, as the sort of really demure, slightly shy girl, not outgoing, and then she's the fucking, you know, she's the gunslinger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kills wicked. It. And they're uh, they're all taking solace in the diner, and this is where they finally come up with this idea that if they shut down the mainframe computer, it should shut down the robots. Cool. So Ferdy and Greg go to find this computer, and uh, at the top of the escalator, there's a bot, and it shoots and throws Greg off the balcony. Now, this is a really fun fact. So after the stuntman did the fall, uh, Jim, the director, he wanted to go before they put it all away of uh, jumping off uh, the balcony onto the airbag. Is he mad? Well, yeah, so he did it, and he broke his rib. (laughs) And, uh, but he didn't tell anyone for pretty much the rest of production. He was in agony. So, basically, so he just cause... carried on. Yeah, yeah. So he, he jumped off the balcony, broke his rib and then was like, right, that's lunch. <laughs> that toxic masculinity alive and well in the 80s, eh? <laughs> Jesus Christ, Jim. Yeah, and he did it from the second balcony, even though the stunt was done from the third. So he was already like downgrading it to be safer. But no. Oh, so he could never tell anyone that he cracked a rib. I mean, he'd yeah. never say face ever again, would he? To be fair, I'd probably done the same. I'd be like, no, I... <laughs> <laughs> but you oh, I mean in a crowd of people whenever you know if you do anything like that you hurt, whenever you hurt yourself you know if you fall over or something and you've actually really fucking hurt your knee and it's bleeding down your shin and you don't, like, oh, okay. and you and you and you get up doing the fake laugh like you find it as hilarious <laughs> and you pretend that the tears coming from your eyes are from hysteria laughing but actually you're in <laughs> agony and really need stitches <laughs> But you don't want to ruin everyone's night, so you just carry on hobbling around. And you around. make sure that you don't have a limp, so you put equal pressure, and it's just pushing that blood <laughs> further out your shit. <laughs> feel like you've re- you really went from experience there, Steve. Yeah, I feel no, like I've that totally was a particular that. particular trauma that you've yeah, buried. I'm so good at hiding pain as laughter. <laughs> <laughs> it's been half. Wasn't that our twenties? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Just one constant stream of tears. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that was digressing. They um, they hide in a clothing store now and they close the shutters. And this is where I, I, I noted the bit where the bot goes, okay, bot number one, <laughs> you'll go around the back. <laughs> Um, and the bot has a blowtorch, another weapon we didn't know about. Yeah. It starts to blowtorch through the Where shutter. Where do they keep all their stuff? What they're, 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 They've got like a Swiss army knife of uh, gadgets, haven't they? It's quite amazing. Now, this is risky because the bot gets through the shutter and the kids have had this great idea to line up loads of mannequins and stand between them so the bots get confused about who to shoot. Yeah. And, I mean, that's very risky because... I mean, 50% chance of hitting either a mannequin or one of them. But luckily, it only gets the mannequins. And they shoot with their array of guns that they had acquired. Because, yeah. as you say, America. And uh, and they make this this other bot malfunction, which is great. Yay, another one down. Then we've got Ferdy and Allison off to find the computer. And Ferdy has this altercation with one of the bots. And he shoots him in the laser face, in his laser eyes. Yeah. And uh, so that makes the bot... Um, lose its laser and um it get the bot gets really pissed off and in frustration he picks up a fire extinguisher and throws it at Ferdy. Yeah. But Ferdy has thrown that fire extinguisher at the bot. Yeah, uh, to be fair, it's retaliating. Yeah, you know. So I'm kinda like Ferdy, you gave him that idea. This learning from you. So how did that go down well for you, Ferdy? Oh, not very well, because now you've hit your head on the ground and blood seeping out your head. <laughs> So, Ferdy, don't... I mean, it's like anything. It, with that sort of, like, throwing a gun at somebody trying to shoot you. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's really Oh, my true. God, you're coming after me. Here's a weapon. Like, I don't <gasps> I don't know. I was worried as it, as he'd made that choice, and I was as right the... to be worried. No, it uh, bit him on the arse, that one. It did. No, Alison's taken solace. She's in the pet store, right? And the bot... Alison is the in bot the pet store. The bot just bursts in, and it's just smashing up all the animal tanks. Yeah, I think it was shit. It's like a bot in a china shop. <laughs> 
full of like Why animals. Why was so cheesy? It was good though. I liked Did you say it. full of one liners? No, full of. I, no, I said full of live animals, but we could oh. edit it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I thought you were telling me I'm full of one liners. You are full of one liners. Very quick, quick witted. Quick witted? Thank you. Um, this is a great bit because she's hiding in obviously all these tarantulas and snakes are crawling around. They crawl up her. And the director. Um, he, uh, he did it first to make sure she was feeling all right. So, well, and look what happened last time he did that. Oh, I can do that jump. I broke a rib. So to be honest, he probably got bitten by a poisonous snake and pretended he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I also, it's like, you know, bl- bless him in that for doing it. But it's one thing, you sign the freaking contract. Do you know what I mean? It's like, True. look, I'll do it to make you feel better. But who gives a shit? What, then he has an epileptic fit or whatever. But he'd still be like, your turn. <laughs> it's just like, I don't really know what. That just feels like more of the director being like, I'm getting involved in absolutely everything and showing off. She's probably like, I just want to get it over with. So never mind your tarantula obsession. I felt I really respect her for that, though, because that was horrific. Yeah, they definitely swap them out at one point because when she crawls out, all these plastic ones fall on their back. Just drop. Aren't moving. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, she had to go through a lot for this. She did. 22 days she would have been knackered yeah exactly a night <laughs> shoot these these people had to convert to being nocturnal exactly <laughs> was, was absolutely knackered after that <laughs> old allison but then oh she's so clever so she goes so i know clever. what i know what i'll mosey on down to the paint the paint store right? as you do she's only just started working there as well hasn't she so she's learned her way around this mall pretty quickly a while um anyway so yeah she finds her mosey's on down to the paint shop and this is a really clever idea so she starts pouring paint everywhere because obviously paint's flammable mm. and she's also got a flare down her cleavage mm. did i mention that earlier no no and we'd forgotten about that we did see her take that flare they make a point obviously since she's been you know writhing around on the floor because she put it in between her titties didn't she of course because yeah. yeah. tits are the best um <sighs> she's writhing around on the floor she's been shot at she's been climbing and you know i i think understandably didn't presume that the flare was still there because I would have thought it probably would have gone off by now. Yeah, but, um, I, haven't, I haven't worn many bras, but is that would that probably work, work its way on out of them? I mean, yeah. Them? <laughs> them boobs. My boobs wouldn't keep anything. I mean, it'd be a mess. I think my <laughs> boobs would set the flare off and I'd be dead. Well, that's the other worry, isn't it? Yeah, especially when you're wriggling along on the floor, <laughs> which she has just done. I, you know, and she's shot things. And I, I mean, I, I have questions, Stevie, but you know. Mm-hmm. Did she get this flare from the furniture store where they also got propane and gas and all that? I yes. Think so. It, so it was ages ago. But also in a furniture store, a flare. I do. I do think they went somewhere else, but yeah, I can't maybe. tell you what. There's a lot of stores. In An explosive mall. store. Yeah, because most malls have them. Yeah, true. An armory. Yeah, you're probably right. Actually, yeah. that's what I've missed most about lockdown. To be honest, not being able to go to the the explosive shop in the and the army store um, and in whiteley's yeah sure. but uh, she tricks the robot um to go she into does. the paint store she sort of uses herself as a as as like bait you know as a target it's very she's yeah. a brave woman and she succeeds and then she cracks open the uh, the flare throws it in the paint bobs your uncle mm. no more killbots no she she says the killbots line back to it like a real fuck you slap in the face the kill yep. but after it kills every kills someone it says thank you have a nice day <laughs> <laughs> and so she throws it back at its face and goes have a nice day and then you get ferdy popping up with a toilet roll in his head <laughs> absolute waste man so he's had time this is my thing right he's had time to get up go and find the toilets and i don't know about malls you go to but my local mall right the toilets are on the top floor it's a nightmare it's a nightmare finding the toilet. So he's gone on a journey, Stevie. Probably past <laughs> his dead friends, his blown up friends, his decapitated friends, his, you know, to go and get a loo roll yes. to pat his head. <laughs> well, Alison, who he's just met and seems to be the love of his life because they bonded over some 1950s version of Jurassic Park in the in the park when everyone else was banging and talking about pepperoni. He's let her writhe around on the floor with a flare stuck between her knockers, <laughs> trying to take on this psycho robot who's got more skills than Bear Grylls. And then she turns around at the end of the season just patting his head. I'm sorry, <laughs> Ferdy, but you had some work to do down here. Yeah. And now he's like, oh, hey. Hey, bae. Nice shot, he says. Yeah, nice shot. So he watched it, the sick bastard. 
That's so true. He probably watched the whole thing play out. Probably slowly going upstairs, you know, in the one remaining working lift that they didn't decimate, going up to the top floor watching. Oh, it's a good shot. Oh, yeah, see what you're doing there with the paint. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> oh, oh, it looks like he's about to die now. I'll come back down. And then I can just give her a compliment. Yeah, because that's what all women want. Watch me <sighs> saw and then compliment me from afar and fuck off again. Story of my life. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my so I'm not sure about that, Stevie. I think it could be some emotional abuse going on in that relationship. <laughs> I don't think that the, he's the one, Ferdy. He's not the one. Um, I don't think he's the one. I think Alison's a badass and deserves better. Though, actually, I do quite like Ferdy. I'm not going to lie. I, I, he's all right. Um, the actor, he was, um, he was in The Karate Kid 2. He had a small part in that. Uh, and that was the last film he did, which was after this. He didn't make another film after 1986. He did some TV and he actually rocked up in an episode of Cobra Kai, which is on Netflix at the moment. Oh. Yeah, which is uh, a Karate Kid sort of uh, sequel. So he's having a resurgence. Yeah, a little bit. But that's that's it. That's Chopping Mall for that's you. That's Chopping Mall. There must be some gold I've skipped over because I was a bit steam trained there. I feel like you covered most of it and I feel like I jumped in at most of the... I mean, one of the lines I liked that I thought was very profound was... um. All they do is have sex and fight. In response, it was like like most couples. And I thought it's actually most couples just have sex and fight. There's another line um, that I thought was nice when everything, all the shit had been going down. And um, one of the girls, can't remember her name, uh, has snapped at Ferdy. And then she says very earnestly, oh, it's not you, Ferdy. I guess I- I'm just not used to being chased around the mall in the middle of the night by a killer robot. By a killer robot. And everyone is like, fair, babe, fair. Really serious. No irony. Yeah, no. Um, another really good moment, actually, that you did skip over, and I'm quite surprised. When they were on top of the lift with explosives. Yes. And it was all quite a high risk scenario. One of them says, <laughs> How much do I owe you for the beers? <laughs> 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 that they got for the party. <laughs> and the other one's like, If we make it out of here alive, it's a six pack. And then they carry on. So not not only, they then mm-hmm. sort of made a half joke, but then they were also like, but ha, <laughs> don't joke too much because it, it was a six pack. So that is what you'll owe me. <laughs> I'm like, of all the times, and literally this was, I think old Susie chops or whatever, it just burnt to death in front of them. Yeah. So it was quite a high pressure situation. They're thinking we really need to start killing these robots now. But this guy's like, mate, I, do you know what? I didn't pay for that beer. And they have a serious conversation about it. <laughs> You're right, though. Also, no one seems to react when their their spouse has burnt to death or nah. had their head blown off. No, we had a tiny bit. We had a tiny bit from Grumpy Chops in the cafe when he was like, you shouldn't have left her. And then right. she was like, she wanted to come and find you, save you. And then I think the mate was like, and then she he shouted one more time. The mate was like, leave her alone. And that was it. That's your lot. Grief over all five stages. No, done. And no one cried. No one cried. No one, you know, like fight, flight, freeze. Mm-hmm. Nobody froze. Everyone was like, cool, let's keep going. <laughs> and I reckon if all my mates were just, you know, popping their clogs in very, very <laughs> horrific ways in front of me, there might be a bit, a little bit of freeze in me. A little bit of, oh, I don't know if I really want to carry on. I might just hide in <laughs> in this bin for a bit and hope for the best. You know, none of them did that. No, no, just no. crack it well, on. Yeah just, ch- yeah, just hide until... It opens up again. I mean, that's that Stevie is my thought. Just find a quiet place, lie down, stay very still, and, and wait till morning. Because the <laughs> thing is, they can't. They need to hear you or see you move around. Yeah. So for me, that's quite a sensible option. No. Yeah, I think you're right. I know I'm right, but instead they kept, you know, doing things like setting off explosives, <laughs> which understandably awoke the robots. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. After saying all this, mm. did you fucking love it? I had a wonderful time. I've had a wonderful afternoon. I mean, I've just been able to have this serious chat with you about it. I was fully invested and he, and I, you know, I was engaged and I did care for some reason. You know, even Fit, Chewing Gum Mike, who never stopped chewing gum and was really a bit of a dickhead. Yeah. I, I quite fancied him and I... So, I mean, that's superficial, but I didn't want him to die, not just because I fancied him, but I had grown attached to him and his chewing gum. And I was interested in that choice. Why did he relentlessly chew gum? And, you know, you would have thought he might have died getting gum or something. It would have felt a bit more. Yeah, I think I read that that was the actor's idea. Oh, choices. And, and it, um, it sounds like an actor's idea as well, doesn't it? <laughs> I've got this, I think... I think I should have a Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's that very sort of... He's just bigging up his part. But it worked for me because I'll always remember him for the, exactly. like... Exactly. The excessive chewing. And it makes you remember. It is a famous story um, 
Barbara Streisand when she was um, when she was a young performer. Uh, and she had this audition and she was just trying to think of a way to make sure because it was girl after girl after girl go in sing eight bars mm. leave whatever and it's girl after girl after girl and um so she came up with this idea and it was a gimmick that she used so she'd be chewing gum when she walked in so she'd walk into the room go over to the pianist hang the music and then they say you ready to sing she'd say yeah and she'd take the gum out of her mouth and she'd stick it under the table of the panel and then back up and sing the song. And obviously, they, they would be either really unhappy about it or think it's disgusting. But it got her remembered every single time because then she sang like an angel. Yeah. And then and they could pick her out of all the other ones that sang like an angel, sang which well. there were only a handful. But she's the gum one. She's like rude, but also sick. So shall yeah. we get her back for a recall? I love the ballsiness. Because, and that's his thing with the gum. You remember? It's I do older. remember Mike. And I remember his name the most. Like everyone else's, I had to check up. But I was like, who's old Mike with the chewing over here? Um, listen, so thank you so much for doing this. Thanks I'm for having, having me. I'm the best time doing this podcast. I'm not surprised. I just get to sit and make people watch these films that I grew up with and every single one so far I've introduced a film to someone and they've pretty much had the best time and loved it and also as you were saying before we um before we started recording it's not like you had to just jump on a podcast and start talking you no, had commitment like... you made me commit and I fully enjoyed it because yeah it's too easy I think to come on a podcast and just kind of come as you are and you know and that's nice and everything but there's a bit of investment and I think especially at this time where we're all kind of it's very easy to I don't know about you but I've got brain fog and my concentration's mm. not great and this was something to like focus on and lose myself in in an hour and I don't know there's just especially in this time where we're all sort of craving more but being forced to sit in less yeah. There's something about the nostalgia of this where like they made something happen from not very much and exactly. it's it's more impressive in a way and they managed to hold our attention with so little to have done it and difficult conditions and there's a lot to be respected about it and um yeah i had a lovely time i would really recommend people to dust out these movies i'm going to watch more i think i'm going to go through your podcast and watch all the of the ones you've discussed. done, yeah, so that you can then have the experience alongside you yeah. and the person chatting about it. Because it is yeah, an experience. It. More yeah, than a, like a film now. I don't know, it feels like more of it, because you're like, what? There's so yeah, exactly. many things. It's a question. You're like, and ah. film, Films are so self-aware now and self-restricting. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they, they feel like, oh, they've got to tie up everything and every loose end and make, make it make sense. And... Um, then with this, it's just like, right, we want these elements. Let's sort of find a story through it and leave wide gaping holes. Yeah. But that's not what you remember. Or if you do remember, it's for the right reasons. So thank you so, so much for coming on Brain Rot. And I'm going to be recruiting you a lot for this. So Great. I'll come back any old time. I had a wonderful time. And if you ever need a synopsis, darling. Oh, my gosh. Four yes. pages. St <laughs> stick around now because you're going to hear the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it really is something <laughs> but again thank you and i will speak to you soon. thank you love you lots bye and scene thank you so much to rita limitin for your passionate and hilarious company i just adore you and thank you for listening to find us on the socials it's stevie's brain rot on twitter and letterboxd and brain rot pod on instagram uh, we also now have a facebook group just search for brain rot podcast and it'll be there and we are having an absolute blast discussing and sharing our favorite trash and as I mentioned earlier, if you want to join our Patreon and hear bonus episodes and receive other benefits, head to patreon.com forward slash Stevie's Brain Rot. Okay, now, as promised, it's time for Tori's synopsis in full. Enjoy! Toodles! Hunky Dr. Stan Simon, Head of Development for Securetronics Unlimited, introduces a brand new robotic security team, Protector 100 series robots. They do things such as close-range sleep darts, steel security doors midnight to dawn, lasers cut through debris. They can distinguish between the good and bad guys via your, your badge. Okay, so we see a busy and peaceful mall, you know, popular with the cool kids of the day and the old folk alike, tired mums and dads, overstimulated kids. This is the mall. This is our mall. Complete with cool kid who skates around various bikini clad beauties who I see having no reason to be there. But hey, this is the 80s, the sex sells. Trouble strikes alongside lightning and the robot security is threatened. 
the lightning triggers a glitch in the system. Smoking on the job and checking out more tits leads to the untimely demise of the robot operator. The mall is closing down for the day and no one is in charge. Could killer robots be about to be on the loose? The teenagers working in the mall decide to throw a secret after-hours party in the mall furniture store as you do. Meanwhile, the Protector 100 series robots are kicking off their shift and they mean business. A rampage begins. Some murders seem easy to explain. A cleaner, accidental electrocution due to a spilled water bucket. Tragic, but easy enough to explain, especially when he had such a bad attitude. But then comes the death of Fit Mike with the chewing gum one of the party goers. Surely now the others will realise all is not well. Now a chase. A surgically enhanced playboy panty wearing babe is chased before her friend's very eyes before her head is brutally exploded in front of them all. Horror robots are on the rampage and decimate the store as terrified teenagers who are actually all about 35 run for cover. All too quickly, the steel security doors close. The remaining teenagers are locked in with the killer robots at least until dawn. Who will make it out alive? All that for a shag. The women are safely hurtled into an air vent which turns out to be some boiling hot furnace while the lads go on the run to the sporting goods store in order to arm themselves. Luckily, America sells guns, so for once this works out quite well. A Ghostbusters meets Indiana Jones type shot occurs as they John Wayne it through the mall like something out of a Donald Trump erotica. Eventually, the lads, lads, lads succeed in blowing up one of the robots while the girls decide to drop down a floor. There is a robot on each floor, so that could be an appalling idea. But luckily, Team Lad have a plan. So does the beautiful but sturdy mechanic chick. Cue the lads attempting to pry open the lift armed with their guns and canisters of some description, whilst the ladies have a plan involving flares and gasoline. Before long, the next robot reveals himself and the girls throw gasoline in an attempt to blow the bastard up. Only he's too strong and remains hot on their tails. Susie is next as she appears unexplicably paralysed on the ground. I worked out on second inspection that a robot shot her in the leg. I had to rewind. Her two pals stay hidden, afraid to come to her aid, and ultimately Susie burns to death. Her boyfriend, on witnessing this, along with the team lad, attempts to shoot the robot to death, but this pesky bugger is too strong. Cue plan B. Team lad, trap the robot in a lift and then shoot at gas canisters. Their aim is appalling, but cue sweet, polite, quiet, I called her Alice, but it's not a name, whatever her name is, who of course has the ability to make an unmissable shot. We witnessed it earlier when she threw the empty wine cup over her head, landing effortlessly in the bin. A clever clue. Dad's a marine, she says nonchalantly, her 80s buffon framing her feline face. Never underestimate a lioness. So they have a break at the cafe, right? And then the remaining 35-year-old teens head for the control room. But no sooner are they at the cafe, another robot is coming for them. I'm just doing the short version here, would you believe? And these robots are getting really annoying now, hot on their tails, stopping at nothing. Marine Girl has a genius idea to use the mannequins to distract them, right? So they do that. And then they use mirrors to, like, throw the lasers back at them. But it all goes a bit wrong. And mechanic Linda gets caught, right? And she dies. And then her husband tries to come to the aid and he dies. So now we've only got the goody two-shoes left and they decide to split up which is a terrible idea but um and Alison gets accosted by a robot but Ferdy the goody two-shoes boy is hot on the tails until his plan of hitting the robot with a fire extinguisher backfires and the robot throws it back to him and blood seeps from his head as it lands on the mall floor we're really near the end now Stevie then Alison the marine is alone she hides in a pet store under some shelves with dog food for like protection right Cages are smashed. I'm worried about the welfare of the animals until I see they're tarantulas and snakes and they're now on top of her and now I'm worried about the welfare of the actress. But anyway, a bird flies out of nowhere and she screams and then very late in the day I realise that the robots use sound as a big way to track their prey, right? And Alison is being hunted and before we know it she's hanging off the side of one of the mall floors close to tumbling to her death and she falls but a marquee selling American sports shite finds her and saves her breaks her fall right and then she's hurt because she's dragging herself along the floor like a slug and I don't fully know what's happened but she must hurt her leg and then she gets in a paint shop and she starts smashing shit everywhere pouring paint everyone thinking what's the plan and the robot's fast approaching as Alice shouts come on you little bastard and she hides and the robot smashes into the shop and all over the paint then she uses herself as a distraction and that flare that I mentioned earlier She's only had that the whole time while she's been dragging herself along the floor and everything. Well, she uses the flare and it blows up the whole store and the robot is trapped and kills. And then Alison goes back to dragging herself along the floor before hobbling forwards where she sees Ferdy only dry in the back of his bloody head with a toilet roll that he's got from somewhere. And they embrace as dawn streams through the windows. The mall is absolutely fucked. 
And our two little goody two shoes and Hunky Simon have a lot to answer for. But you know, the the goody two shoes made it, Stevie. 